here all the motive behind this ppt and this presentation is to make uh, the viewers understand how to create a safety plan for their project site or their work site or as per their requirement now uh, while preparing the ppt i had certain aim and the aim was that uh, any organization who wants to have a safety plan for their organization then they can have this uh, ppt as a route map as a guide one can use this ppt to prepare their safety plan and it can also be used by safety officers and it can also be used by site engineers also to prepare the safety plan at the same time this plan will also help the organization to incorporate the governmental legislation because in our country there are several governmental laws that are applicable to either it's a construction industry or either it's a process industry so a lot of things are there that are applicable so this plan will help them to incorporate those legislation with the plan and it will also help the organization to identify the roles and responsibility of the employee because uh, the employee who are at work they are the one who have to follow the rules they are the one who have to implement the rules so they need to be made accountable so the aim of this plan is to develop a rules and responsibility matrix for them for any SSC plan or for any safety plan the policy is paramount it is very important because it gives the strength to the complete document it gives the strength in decision making therefore the policy should be so designed that it should explain the commitment of the organization the commitment of the management it should also define the roles and the responsibility of its staff for in implementing safety at their workplace and the policy should be so designed that it would be able to explain how the organization is committed in preventing incidents and uh, accidents and uh, investigating near misses so these things should reflect in the policy the SSC objectives targets and key performance indicators they provide a road map they provide a guide that what an organization is planning to achieve therefore these things uh, should be planned in a very uh, perfect manner in a very peculiar manner and such that these data uh, which we are talking about they are uh, quantitative in nature in HSE objectives and targets we are having zero accident so this is our target so if you are talking about training hours that is 2% of the safe man hours so this is an objective all accidents should be investigated so this is a target zero non-compliance this is the objective plastic free environment this is our objective 100 percent risk assessment of hazardous activities so this is a target so the target should be such and the objective should be such that at the end of the session or at the end of the year one is able to quantify it so these things should be so planned before going further deep into the presentation it is very important first to understand the concept of five e's of safety first is engineering second is education third is enthusiasm then evaluation and then enforcement then i will like uh, i will show you how these five uh, concepts are applicable and uh, they are the building block of this safety plan since we are working in the field of uh, uh, safety so we all are very much familiar with the risk assessment process process so this part will come under the engineering part because uh, uh, through this uh, risk assessment process we are implementing engineering controls engineering equipments and all kinds of engineering studies to identify the risk and hazards in our activity so it will follow another another engineering control i am not going more deep into the hierarchy of controls and other things 
because uh, already I have uploaded one video through which uh, one can understand this risk assessment process. So please go through that video. My only concept is to make you understand that in the safety plan, the under the engineering head, this risk assessment process will come. Now the safe work procedure. It forms one of the important part of the engineering parameters of the five P's of safety. So under safe work procedures, we are having work procedures or method statement. A work procedure is a document that is prepared in advance before the execution of the job to help us to identify how the job has to be executed in the safest manner. Then comes the job safety analysis. So it's a risk assessment uh, process under uh, all the risk involved in the job identified and the control measures that has to be implemented is also identified. Then during an uh, execution of the job, there should be a continuous inspection. So there should be checklists. So this is how a safe work procedure should be designed. Now under the education and training part, we need to identify different kinds of training that will going to help in the skill development of our employees, of our em em uh, workers. At the same time, we also need to identify induction training program for new joiners. So people who are coming to the work site for the first time, they need to be given some uh, introductory training about the activities, about the risk and hazard present at the workplace. And then along with that, any special training that is required that also has to be provided before people are involved in any hazardous operations. So under the education head, this part will fall. This training program could be either uh, on-job training, uh, classroom training program, or it can be uh, some sort of workshop, but it has to be planned by the administration department, the HR department, the different HODs, and the HAC manager. So it has to be prepared by getting together with all the departments and there should be a training plan that is very definite. There are certain training programs which requires involvement of a specialized agency. So we can see here in the picture that work at height. So for work at height we can uh, involve some other agency from the outside who can come and train and also teach how to conduct a rescue in case of any fall from height. Safety signage instructions they form a very important part of the HSC plan. So these signages should be so designed that they clearly tell the uh, reader what is the uh, what what they want to say. So these things should be clearly visible through some uh, pictorials and uh, there should be clear instruction like warnings, keep out, danger. So all these things should be there in the safety signages. Enthusiasm. Uh, it's an, one of the important uh, point of the five E's of safety and under enthusiasm comes the motivation of workmen. We always need to motivate our workers to do better. We need to appreciate them when they are doing things in a better manner when they are following HSC norms. So to promote uh, safety, this should be also a part of the HSC plan. Evaluation, an important aspect of the five P's of safety. Now, uh, when uh, we have planned something, then we need to evaluate, to keep a check whether we are on the right track. So evaluation is very important. So when it comes to HSC, uh, the following things can be done to evaluate the project and HSC performance such as daily inspection checklist. Then after completion of the job, post completion checklist. Then during the execution of the job, work execution checklist. So this checklist can be of different kinds. I'm not going more into the detail. Uh, for this, I will be posting another video, another training slide under which I will be discussing more on the different kinds of inspection that can be conducted at a project site. Now under the evaluation comes the inspection checklist. 
and uh, when you talk about the inspection checklist there can be a daily inspection checklist or there can be a weekly inspection inspection checklist such as walk through audit forms then there could be a quarterly inspection checklist there could be a yearly inspection checklist so these all forms are part of the evaluation program and they help us to evaluate the existing condition of the hsc implementation at project sites inspection checklist they form an important parameter of the evaluation plan so when you talk about the inspection checklist there could be a daily inspection checklist or there could be a weekly inspection checklist such as uh, weekly walkthroughs or uh, weekly management walkthrough there can be a quarterly audit forms also there could be a yearly audit forms also so there are a variety of inspection checklist which forms the part of the evaluation plan and these checklists help us to identify the present uh, implementation condition of the hsc at your workplace monitoring leading and lagging indicators so these indicators also form a part of the evaluation program and uh, they help us to identify and keep a track on the health condition of the projects of your workplace so <clears throat> under leading and lagging indicators what we need to identify first of all we need to check completion of ra that is risk assessment for new jobs so how many new jobs are identified and are the risk uh, assessment conducted for those jobs so uh, it will come under the engineering part but the but as a whole it will come under the evaluation part then total of uh, total hours of training conducted for the workforce then total number of near miss reported total number of inspection completed total number of first aid reported total number of accidents happened so uh, uh, if you start tracking all these things then it will help you to identify the health of your workplace enforcement enforcement forms one of the important uh, parameter of the five is of safety so after uh, engineering education evaluation enthusiasm but still it is found that there are certain individuals uh, <coughs> sorry stakeholders uh, uh, vendors agencies who are not listening who do not want to comply with the norms then we need to take disciplinary actions <coughs> so when it comes to comes for some individuals we need to give verbal warnings written warnings they can also be suspended for a certain period of time and if it's still it uh, uh, unsafe actions and condition persist then we can finally remove those people from workplace this is also applicable for the stakeholders we can give written warnings we can issue prohibitory notices and we can also put monetary implications uh, implications such as fines so they also form very important part of the five piece of safety so now under committee and meetings it is very important in a project uh, and any organization to form a hsc committee and this committee should meet every month and they should uh, discuss on all the issues related to the hsc health safety and environment of the organization and the chairman for this committee should be the md of the company and the secretary for this committee should be the hsc personnel either he could be the hsc manager or the hsc supervisor or hsc engineer based upon the different kinds of uh, organization and the projects now under this committee and meetings uh, all the focus should be on the discussion of the leading and lagging indicators then what are the root causes for the incidents then uh, what are the bottlenecks for in achieving the hse performance as per the targets and plannings so this now reporting of the hse manager it also forms a very important part of the hse plan so an hse manager should always report to the managing director directly and through a proper channel
not indirectly through other department heads. Now, this is why because it gives him the freedom to discuss the problems of the workplace directly. And if any decision that is coming from the managing director, then it becomes very important for the other department heads to follow. Therefore, reporting of HS manager plays a very vital role in implementing a good HSC plan at the organization. In the HSC plan, the roles and responsibility of the employees in uh, implementing HSC at their workplace should be clearly identified. This, uh, this helps in avoiding ambiguity because if there is a confusion then who has to do what for implementing HSC then it could lead to confusion and which will further lead to unsafe condition and at workplace. Therefore, it plays a very important role and it should be clearly identified in the HSC plan. So, in this slide, we will understand what are the expected outcomes if an uh, organization implements this HSC plan. First of all, implementation of this plan will help the organization to align itself with the legal requirement of the country or uh, of the local government. It will also help the organization to identify its business risk in advance. This will in turn help in reduction of the lost time incident and accident at workplace. It will also reduce the workers and employee turnover because every workers and employee want to work with an organization that takes care of its employees and at the end it will help the organization to meet the legal requirements of the organizations. While preparing this HSA plan, I have taken references from a BOCW Act, Indian Factory Act, ISO 45001-2018 and ILO recommendations.